Hey there, my name is Jackson Rudolph, and this is my professional development plan for my MCAA 560 class. Uh, part one, we're going to develop and uh, present my vision statement. So the vision statement for the Kingsway Christian Varsity High School soccer program is to be the ideal program to shape resilience, respect, uh, and determination of mind, body, and spirit while competing in a manner that builds positive character traits in young student athletes. Uh, my vision for this program is to transform student athletes into leaders by assisting with the development of positive traits that improve their uh, physical, mental, and spiritual well-being. So this kind of goes into that three-dimensional coaching um, emphasis along the word transform there. Um, this dream is uh, special and personal to me for a lot of reasons, uh, but really it's due to the amount of potential growth that uh, we can have on student athletes. Uh, the emphasis on resilience is one of the things that um, really makes this, a, uh, this vision statement unique uh, and distinctive. Um, we're gonna talk a lot about resilience in this presentation, but due to that emphasis, uh, that program is really able to adapt. So in a 15 year period, that program might look like a lot of different things. And that really depends on um, the conditions that surround the program. So the ability to be resilient is really the ability to uh, kind of adapt to changes, uh, to be pliable and to be elastic. Um, uh, again, here it says, uh, uh, adapt to challenges that fit current needs. So the ability to change over time, depending on current needs, um, and to be armed with character to overcome those obstacles. So a lot of resilience uh, in this vision statement. Uh, part two, we're gonna develop a three-year personal development plan here. Um, in terms of brain food, the books that I like, um, Inside Out Coaching, you'll notice uh, Ethics 101 and Successful Coaching there are all books got, uh, that I um, read for this MCAA program through Concordia. But you'll notice here that I have Rebuilding Milo, which is a great tool for any coach uh, who works hand in hand with students because it's a great book on injury rehabilitation as well as injury, uh, injury prevention techniques. You'll see here that I've uh, highlighted The Uncommon Life by Tony Dungy. This is important because uh, we've got a lot, uh, we've, we've done a lot of work with Tony Dungy during this specific 560 course. Um, but The Uncommon Life, it's a daily challenge book that gives you um, something to do on a daily basis. So it's kind of something new every day, and it really fits in one of my personal mottos in terms of development, which is be better than you were the day before. Uh, for my personal development plan, I did a SWOT plan as well. So strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats to my own personal development. Uh, my strengths are resilience, determination as a virtue, uh, morality, and uh, my personal philosophy on being prepared. Um, and I'll go into that personal philosophy on the next slide. Uh, heading over to weaknesses, hubris, self-assuredness, determination as a vice, and judgment. Um, you'll notice that determination can both be a strength and a weakness as far as virtues go. If you end up uh, going too deep into a virtue, it does end up becoming a vice, and determination uh, absolutely does. So. Um, heading over to opportunities. So the opportunity to surround myself with the right people, people who can mitigate my weaknesses. So to not to put too fine a point on it, but people who can call me on my BS, people who might help uh, with that self-assuredness, with that hubris, and with that judgment to kind of keep me on the, the right track. Um, and again, here I've mentioned uh, being an improvement on who I was the day before. So uh, threats, people who feed my weaknesses, uh, developing insecurities, choosing easy decisions instead of right decisions. So that's one of the things with leadership is, uh, especially with that morality in terms of that true north moral compass, being able to make decisions because they're right, not just because they're easy. All right, my personal philosophies, as I mentioned, we were gonna go over on the next slide. Uh, plan your work, work your plan, and stay ready so you don't have to get ready. Really try your best not to be surprised. Uh, you can't plan for every eventuality, but you can try. Um, honest self-assessment is obviously crucial for the idea of personal development for any leader, but you'll notice here on the next one, um, it's really the idea of honest external assessment. So surrounding people, um, doing those seasonal reviews with administration, and getting um, their feedback, their honest feedback as well, and kind of taking it into account with your own honest self-assessment to see where you can make those adaptations. Uh, part three is going to be the one-year staff development plan. 
Uh, for the mission statement, we're going to provide the opportunity for student athletes to collaborate in order to reach physical, mental, and spiritual peaks while competing at a high level. Um, this mission statement will be reinforced throughout the season so that my staff can prioritize the development through, again, collaboration here is the, uh, the, the big word. And you'll notice, again, physical, mental, and spiritual peaks uh, going into the concept of that three-dimensional coaching. Unity and chemistry within my staff. So leaving the office, planning outings, getting outside of the office is always a great way to build that staff unity and chemistry. Um, also emphasizing team goals over individual goals is going to be important as well. Um, noticing that team goals typically have a broader scope or do more good for more people than an individual success can. Um, environment and open, honest communication, even if it hurts, this is a big one. Um, great leaders, great friends tell harsh truths. So understanding that harsh truths are not meant to be an insult, but they're really meant to help development. Um, and then setting clear and concise expectations, just so that those staff members know what the goal is and how to work and get there together. Uh, improving skills for the staff, you'll notice individual coaching and shadowing, always very important, just so I can reinforce that three-dimensional coaching. Um, workshop courses and seminars, um, just so they can kind of stay on top of maybe new science, new training techniques, new coaching techniques, stuff like that. Um, and then increasing responsibilities. You'll notice here I have something called SED principle. It's something that I rely on a lot. Um, it stands for specific adaptations to imposed demands. So if you want someone to have an increased responsibility, give them more responsibility. They will adapt uh, and become more responsible over time. Uh, the coach's code of conduct here, uh, I have the full attachment on the PowerPoint. I'm not going to read through it, but I will point out um, some of the points that I've found to be most uh, illuminating for that code of conduct. So that first one's going to be conducting yourself in a dignified manner relating to emotion, language, uh, and actions. Another one that I thought was important is uh, demonstrating respect for the opponent, uh, as well as the judgment of the referees and the opposing coaches. Uh, part four is the one-year student-athlete development plan. Student-athlete development in terms of their character values, you'll notice here that the uh, resilience, ethics, and um, determination uh, kind of go in order in terms of priority. So we've gone a lot into resilience during this presentation, but I'm going to hit it once more. Um, it really de uh, determines how a person is going to deal with hardship. Is it something that's going to stop them in their tracks, or is it something that they can overcome uh, and adapt to? So hitting that fork in the road, right? Are we gonna go home? Are we gonna prove to ourselves um, that we can deal with that hardship? Uh, next is the ethics and the morality. Again, we went into that a little bit earlier in the uh, presentation, but knowing the difference between what is right and what is easy uh, and really reinforcing that golden rule principle. Um, the consequentialist group utilitarian uh, ethics approach, the most amount of good you can do for the most amount of people. You do have to be careful though because uh, having a mindset of do the uh, ends justify the means is the way to destruction, paved with good intentions, um, anchoring, really anchoring the utilitarian concept of ethics to the golden rule there is going to help you kind of stay on the straight line in terms of morality. Um, determination, it really goes hand in hand here with resilience, so I'm not going to dive too much into that, but it really depends on is this obstacle going to stop you? Um, uh, heading over to leadership, the best way to develop leaders, uh, especially in young student athletes, is to give them the opportunity to lead in an environment where they really do feel comfortable. Um, again, going back to that said principle, right, specific adaptations to imposed demands. We need to impose a certain demand, which is the responsibility, to get that uh, specific adaptation we want, which is to become more of a leader, to be able to shoulder that responsibility. Um, letting your athletes fail, again, going back to an environment they feel comfortable in. Uh, most of my biggest uh, personal learning has come from moments where I have failed. So letting your athletes fail is always very important. Um, and then not being, the, the best player doesn't have to be the leader. Um, sometimes you'll find someone who is reluctant to lead, but you give them the opportunity and they kind of can surprise themselves and really wear the mantle of leadership well. So the idea of letting people who might be reluctant to lead, give them the opportunity, it might be something that they wear well. Uh, in terms of academic performance within uh, Kingsway Christian, there is a GPA minimum, it is 2.5, uh, and that really incentivizes a focus on academics over athletics. 
uh, constant communication between teaching staff and the coaches is utilized. So if there is kind of a bubble student, uh, it allows for the coaches and the teachers to kind of meet up and figure out what might be the best way to get this student above that 2.5 mark. Uh, I had the idea of doing a private tutoring and study hall sessions on days that we don't train, which is Wednesday. So two hours um, after school on Wednesday, making myself available in the library. If you're below a 3.0, it is mandatory to do, that, uh, to do those two hours. Uh, and if you're above 3.0, it is optional. So again, additional incentive to kind of not be too close to that 2.5 bubble and really try to stay 3.0 or above. Pride, all right, so talking about pride, um, uh, we came up with the code of conduct with the athletic uh, administration as well as the athletic student council in the school, so it was kind of a collaborative effort. One of the things we came up with was P-R-I-D-E. So pride, uh, P, pursuing victory uh, in honor and dignity, respecting teammates, uh, coaches and opponents, as well as the referees. I, invest in your future by prioritizing education. Uh, D, demonstrate pride with effort and accept defeat with dignity. Um, finally, E is excelling on and off the field of play. Finally, here, um, I'm going to talk about what being a transformational leader, what I think that means. And to me, it's a type of leadership that inspires positive, worthwhile change uh, in groups and individuals in an effort to develop more leaders. Again, the emphasis on developing more leaders is going to be important. Um, there's almost a viral or contagious component to being around a good leader. And uh, one of the things I notice is when something is contagious, it spreads through a, through a certain method, right? So coughing, sneezing, but in this case with leadership, it's spread through authenticity. So really reinforcing the fact that you are genuine, you are authentic, and you want to help people grow. My references, and then the URL. All right, thank you.